Well, I wanted to start off by thanking everybody for making the time to join us on the webinar today. We have quite a few people on the line, so we'll get started right away here. Today's webinar is entitled The Future of Microfilm and is part of our ongoing series about embrace, embracing the paperless office. Our objectives with today's webinar are to strictly update you on what the recent changes are in the microfilm industry and talk about how this could potentially impact your microfilm collection and what options you have moving forward. So let's start way back at the beginning. Why do organizations use microfilm and why did they choose to do this? Well, first and foremost, it was around document security. We see it quite often where files get left out on people's desks, on top of the filing cabinets, in the file room, things like that, and this is confidential information. The microfilm is a lot easier to lock up and maintain and restrict access to the equipment you need to reproduce it. Archival preservation was definitely a, a big part of this. If your microfilm is created, processed, and stored properly, it has a life expectancy of up to 500 years. So for long-term archival needs, things like student records, medical records, pension files, everything like that, microfilm was a really great media for that. And finally, it was a good element to a disaster recovery plan. A lot of organizations who created microfilm didn't actually destroy their paper records. The microfilm was part of their disaster recovery plan. So they'd take those paper records, they would put them into off-site storage, and they would have multiple copies of their records on-site and off-site in case of event of a disaster, fire, flood, sabotage, theft, anything like that. So how has the industry changed? Well, I'm just gonna pull up all these points on the screen here and we'll go through them. So one of the biggest changes that happened recently is, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, a few years ago, Kodak ran into some financial difficulties, and one of the first elements they sold off was their microfilm division, and it was sold to a company called Eastman Park Micrographics out of Texas, and really what we saw is once that transition was completed, the cost of Kodak microfilm skyrocketed. And the other brands like Fujifilm followed suit, and microfilming became a very expensive process. Egg for microfilm, on the other hand, didn't jack up their prices, uh, and this was perceived as, as a real threat to the other brands. So Eastman Park Micrographics actually went and purchased or made an exclusive worldwide distribution agreement with Egg for Film. Essentially, they killed off all the Kodak production and distribute egg of film under their own label at a much higher price point. So the ability to just buy the raw materials to capture your images onto microfilm has gotten a lot more expensive. In combination with that, a lot of the major manufacturers, your Canon and Minolta's, they've really just dropped their micrographics lineup. I mean, it was a very small part of their overall business and it was perceived as, as a dying industry and it's not something they wanted to continue to support. And aside from those big manufacturers, a lot of the smaller ones are the niche ones who specialized in the equipment to process your film or duplicate your film. They all, you know, fold it up or become a lot more expensive because the demand's not there. If you're only selling six to ten machines a year, you're really going to need to be very profitable on those. They need to be high margin products. But also, the affordability of conversion came down. And when we talk about the affordability of conversion, we're talking about you know archiving our paper documents digitally as opposed to on film, as well as converting our microfilm over to electronic records. And what we've seen a lot in the last few years is that we're really embracing the digital technology. So, what are our options going forward then? Well, we've got a few different options and we can go into all of these in a lot more detail here. And the options are, you know, buying new equipment, just replacing what we already have. We can look at a digital conversion, so scanning all of our microfilm and, and integrating it into our, our network systems. Digital reel, which is the only actual product we're going to talk about in this webinar because it's kind of a, a unique beast all of its own. We could look at off-site and re, um, retrieval services and 
hey, an option really is just sticking with the status quo as well. Just keep that old machine limping along as long as you can. So let's jump into these a little bit more detail and we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. So what's the benefit of sticking with the status quo? Well, it requires no change. You know, we always say people don't like change and this doesn't require it and there's really no upfront investment or cost to you. It's, it's just maintaining what you're doing now. The shortcomings with this though is it really exposes you to obsolescence. Your machine could run out of supply items, parts, service could no longer be available for it, and then you're forced to make a rush decision. You're going to have to decide to buy a new machine or one of the other options that we're going to talk about very quickly to avoid service interruptions. So who is this the right fit for? Well, organizations who probably only need their collection, microphone collection, for another one to three years. Past there, you're really kind of pushing your luck of whether or not parts and, and supply items will be available. So what about the off-site storage option? Well, you no longer have to worry about technology migration. You don't have to worry about buying new machines or scanning your films or, or what you're going to do when microfilm is, is truly obsolete. That's on the part of the, your storage vendor. It can act as part of your d disaster recovery plan. So again, we mentioned earlier that a lot of people didn't destroy their paper records or they have multiple copies of their microfilm. So now with this copy offsite in a secure location, you've got multiple copies spread in different areas. It's a very low upfront cost to get it into storage. And what we hear quite often is that actually the, f the retrieval times are faster than what people are doing on their own. Uh, typically it's it's two to four business hours and a lot of people tell us hey we, we can't even find it on film that quick ourselves there are some shortcomings with this option though is one that the microfilm is out of your possession so you really want to vet any uh, storage vendor properly to make sure that they have the security and the infrastructure in place to protect your information and there's also a, an ongoing cost associated with it so as long as your microfilm collection is going to be in existence, you're never going to stop getting a bill. There's going to be monthly storage and retrieval fees. So who's this the right fit for? Well, if you need to retain your collection long term, and you, but you have very few retrievals, so you know one to ten a week. Example, this might be a, a school board who doesn't go back and look at transcripts too often from microfilm, but the retention requirements are still 55 years after graduation. So digital reel, like we talked about, this is the only real product that we're going to mention in this presentation because we want we didn't want it to be product centric. But digital reel is kind of its own unique animal. It's it's a digitalization of your film collection or fiche collection, and it basically turns your computer into a microfilm reader printer. You scroll through the film like you see on the screen here, just like you would on your existing machine. And you scroll through so many images at a time until you find the file you're looking for, highlight it, and press print, save, whatever. It's a really unique system. It guarantees 100% image capture because it actually digitizes the entire length of the film. So even blank areas, lead or trailer on the either ends. It provides full text searching as an option as well. So if you want to find Jane Smith's file across your entire collection of thousands of rolls of film, you type in Jane Smith and it'll pull up a Google-like search results for you of all the rolls where she's contained. Click on one, bring you right to that image. It's a very low cost conversion option. It looks and feels like a microfilm machine, so there's, there's a little bit of familiarity with that. And as well as it gives you both a black and white, but a grayscale and an adjustable grayscale option as well. So we've all seen hard to read microfilm images. With Digital Reel, we can switch over to the grayscale. We can adjust the brightness and contrast to make those hard to read areas visible. The only real shortcoming to Digital Reel is really the, the indexing is a little limited. So you have that full text searching, which is going to help for sure. But where it's limited is that you know, we're looking at newspapers here in this example, and we don't go down and index to this is March 17th, 1973. We index that this roll contains all of 1973 newspapers. So you open up that roll and you'd have to scroll through until you came to March, same way you're doing it now. And the people who are the right fit for this is people who want to make the shift 
to a digital system. They want to move away from their film collection entirely, but they don't want to integrate these images into like a document management system or store them on their network because indexing them down to that level is going to be more expensive and they don't want the clutter inside of a business system like that because these are historical records that aren't referenced often. So digital conversion, so this is actually taking all of your microfilm collection and scanning it to electronic images. So these can easily be fully integrated into any system you're looking for. So they could just be saved on your network, they could go into a document management system, CRM system, ERP, whatever you're using, electronic medical records. Your indexing and the filing matches your specific needs. So if we're talking medical records and you want to go down to patient number, name, date of birth, you can drill down right to that information quickly and easily. It's not limited to any kind of specialized hardware or software. You know, we'll give you back PDF images or TIFF images or, or whatever's going to be compatible with your system. And as long as you have a program that will open a PDF, you can access these images. It's really the fastest and most complete transition from microfilm to digital. The images, once they're on your network, can easily be backed up. And this whole conversion can either be outsourced to a solution provider or done internally. Uh, a little caveat to the internally part, machines to do this are very very pricey. Um, so what we typically see is it's done as an outsourced service uh, because once it's converted, that machine that you've, you've invested a lot of money in is essentially a paperweight to you. But it is a possibility. So a short come to this is that it's a larger upfront cost. So to scan and index and, and return all this image, it's, it's really getting down to a lot of detail. And it's, again, it's not out of the realm of possibility, but out of the options we talk about, it has the largest upfront cost. But what's important to remember is that then you're done with it. You never have to worry about this transition again or migrating the data. So who's the right fit for this? Well, if the microfilm still plays a key role in your organization. If part of your long-term business plan is to continue to reference this material, you need to retain it, and you access it very, very frequently, this information is key to be digitalized and put into a line of business system. And finally, buying new equipment. So taking that reader printer you have now and just replacing it. The real benefits here is that it's, it's a direct upgrade from the existing hardware. So your P, it, there's a familiarity with it. It's kind of business as normal. You don't have to change a lot around there. It provides more robust features. The machines you're going to find today are all you know, film to digital scanners. So they'll let you save to USB keys, email it out, adjust the image before you print it to make sure it's perfect. And it's a very cost effective option in terms of the overall scheme of, of your different options because so it can be leased or financed over a time period as well. The shortcoming here, though, is you're only prolonging the inevitable. At some point, you know, machines aren't going to be available, uh, parts aren't going to be available, and you're going to need to choose one of these options. So it's, it's kind of a stopgap here. The other thing I'll note, too, is that the equipment replacement timelines are going to be a lot faster now than they have been in the past. It's a little story. We had a, a machine that came out in 1981 called the Canon PC-70. And around 2003, Canon discontinued the toner cartridges for this machine. So just over 20 years. And we had a call, 432 customers who actively were buying this toner from us and let them know that there's nothing left. They're going to have to go through this. Now that's 20 years. It's a long time. I mean, the machine really doesn't know you anything at that point, right? But what you're going to notice now is that because these machines are all digital, they're going to recycle faster. So, you know, right now everything's out and it works with Windows 7 and it works with Windows 8. But when Windows 10, 12 comes out, what you're going to find is these machines aren't compatible with them. Most likely. Shouldn't say they won't be, but most likely won't be. And the reason is is that manufacturers want you to turn these machines on a more regular basis as well. They want to sell more machines. So who's the right fit for this? Well, organizations who provide public access to their collections 
or who have moderate retrieval needs and limited budget. So if you have people coming into like let's say a library or an archive and they're accessing the information, this or something like digital reel is a good option for them. If you know this is a like I said earlier, it's a stopgap if uh, your machine does go down, so it's and it's a cost effective option. So in case I haven't hinted at it enough throughout the presentation, the question of when should I be thinking about this? Well, the answer is now. Um, this isn't a problem that's in the distant future. This is a problem that's right now. You want to start thinking about it now because when you want to plan for budget. You don't want your machine to all of a sudden go down, be completely irreparable. You're not able to access your collection and then you have to scrounge to find the money to do something. That's when bad business decisions are usually made. You want to avoid process or service interruptions. So if you're, let's say, in a healthcare application and you have a patient who's, who's upstairs and you need access to their medical file, but your machine's down and you, it's all on microfilm and how are you going to get to this? Or you have student, a former student at your school board who's looking for a copy of their transcript so they can apply to university or, or a new job. You want to avoid those types of interruptions. And you also want to minimize the downtime. These, any of these options, whether it's new equipment, off-site retrieval, scanning, there's always a ramp-up time. So to go from machine down to you're up and going it could be three, four weeks at, at best case scenario and, and potentially longer as well. So you want to minimize your downtime by planning for this early. So just a little quick about us. Uh, we've been in the this industry for uh, over 40 years since 1971 and our whole focus has really been in the document management records management space and what we strive to do is help companies large and small who are frustrated because of service delays calls caused by poor records retrieval systems they're unhappy with the space that it takes to store records in their office and who struggle with sharing information across team members quickly and efficiently we offer a variety of services in terms of you know, microfilm hardware, microfilm scanning services, document scanning, document management software, and so on. And at the end of today's presentation, you'll get a, a follow-up email with a little link in it to download our, our free guide about 28 questions to ask to avoid choosing a poor microfilm scanning partner. So if you want to go down the route of scanning your collection, what you should be looking for in a vendor who's going to do this. I also encourage all of you to reach out and connect with us on social media. We're kind of on all the, the main ones there. You can go to our website. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter. We've got some great videos up on our YouTube channel, and we're also on Google+. So that being said, about wraps up our presentation for today. I wanted to thank everyone again for making the time for us, and wish you all a great day. Thank you.